For the rest of this module, we will take an interactive approach. You will have a reading or video to watch on the regulation of a system, and then I will test your knowledge by asking you questions about it. First up is the lactose operon, the first to be investigated in basically any organism. Make sure you have read and watched the video for the lactose operon, links to which I have posted on Canvas before proceeding. Here is the first question. A frame shift mutation in LACZ would cause... Here is the second question. There are mutations that can be isolated that will cause the LAC repressor to not bind its allosteric effector molecule, allolactose. Such a mutation would cause... The LAC operon is an example of... And finally, a mutation that inactivates the repressor LAC-I would cause... Okay, let's go back and explain those. The first one it says a frame shift in the LAC-Z mutation would cause what? A microbe would be unable to grow on lactose is the correct answer. That's C. A frame shift mutation would absolutely inactivate LAC-Z which is beta-galactosidase. This is the enzyme that's actually responsible for splitting lactose into glucose and galactose. Without this activity, the bacterium would not be able to grow on lactose. So if you can't bind the allosteric effector, what happens? The correct answer here is C. The mutation alters the allosteric site on LAC-I, the LAC-I repressor, so that it cannot bind its effector allolactose. Therefore, LAC-I is still active, it just can't bind the molecule that shuts it off. So it's always going to be active, it's always going to bind to its site and block RNA polymerase. Therefore, the microbe would be unable to grow on lactose because RNA polymerase would transcribe the operon. The LAC operon is an example of induction. The LAC repressor is synthesized in an active state and is inactivated by the binding of its inducer allolactose. Since it uses a repressor, it is negative regulation and specifically its induction because allolactose inactivates the repressor. Finally, you would think the correct answer is B. Since LAC-I is inactive, it cannot block transcription and that's what I'll give you credit for. The promoter is open and RNA polymerase will transcribe the operon. In reality, this isn't what, is, what happens, and we'll talk about that in the next lecture on global regulation. We now move on to the TRIP operon. It is an example of an anabolic operon. It is under negative regulation by the TRIP repressor, TRIP-R. Pictured here is the operon layout. There's five genes that are involved in synthesizing tryptophan from charismate, E, D, C, B, and A. There's a promoter and then something called a leader peptide. TRIP-R, when synthesized, is inactive. Under low tryptophan concentrations, which is the co-repressor for TRIP-R, TRIP-R does not bind to its site on the DNA RNA polymerase binds to the promoter and begins mRNA synthesis. As the cell expresses the trip enzymes and synthesizes tryptophan, its concentration increases and it eventually binds to trip R, activating it. Trip R binds to the site of the DNA then and blocks transcription. All right, so here are some questions. Regulation of the TRIP operon by TRIP R is an example of a frame shift mutation in TRIP A would a deletion mutation of the TRIP R gene would All right, let's go back and answer these questions. Regulation of the TRIP operon by TRIP R is an example of repression. The repressor is synthesized in an inactive state and binding of the co-repressor, tryptophan, activates it. It is negative regulation since binding of TRIP-R turns off transcription. A frame muta shift mutation in TRIP-A would TRIP-A make the cells unable to synthesize tryptophan. TRIP-A is part of the biosynthetic pathway for tryptophan. 
It is part of the enzyme tryptophan synthase, which is the last step of the tryptophan pathway. Loss of trypA activity would result in an inability to synthesize tryptophan. A deletion mutation of the tryptR gene would. You would think that the correct answer would be cause constitutive expression of the trip genes, but the correct answer is actually D. You don't have enough information to tell. It is because there are more layers of regulation on the trip operon, as we'll cover right now. Attenuation is the second layer of regulation often seen in amino acid biosynthesis operons. It operates at the level of transcription and translation. The process by which attenuation is regulated by translating ribosomes depends upon the makeup of the 5' end of the mRNA transcript. mRNAs that are involved in this sort of attenuation are unusual in that the first open reading frame, which I will call an ORF, o -R -F, is very small and the encoded protein does not actually function in amino acid biosynthesis. These ORFs term leader peptides are translated. The ease with which they are translated affects whether or not transcription termination takes place between the ORF and the genes that follow. In each mRNA, the first ORF is rich in codons that specify the amino acid under regulation. You can see that here in the figure. If the concentration of tryptophan is low, ribosomes will pause at the trip codon since they have to wait to find one. If the concentration of tryptophan is high, Ribosomes read through the leader peptide and pause at the end of the leader peptide, which is what always happens when you get to the end of a protein. To understand how attenuation works, remember that transcription and translation in prokaryotes is coupled. Soon after the transcription of an mRNA begins, ribosomes bind to it and start translating protein. In the case of the trip transcript, synthesis of the leader peptide begins. As the ribosome moves down the leader sequence, it eventually encounters the tryptophan codons. If tryptophan is plentiful, charged tRNA trip readily inserts in the amino acid. The ribosome proceeds to the stop codon and pauses. The mRNA has four stretches of compatible bases that can form competing secondary structures. In this arrangement, region 2 is blocked by the ribosome. Therefore, region 3 pairs with region 4. The presence of the 3-4 loop forms a terminator that aborts transcription, preventing synthesis of the rest of the mRNA. At its most severe, about 90% of the transcripts are terminated in the trip example. If tryptophan is in short supply, the ribosome pauses at the trip codon since little tRNA trip is available to continue polymerization. The position of the paused ribosome actually covers region 1, so it cannot pair with region 2. Region 2 is then free to form the 2-3 loop, which prevents the 3-4 termination inducing loop from forming. The 2-3 loop forms preferentially because it can form before region 4 is even transcribed. One common misconception that students have is that every stem loop in the mRNA is a terminator sequence. This is not true. A row independent terminator is a special stem loop structure followed by a run of use. Therefore, in this case, transcription is not terminated when tryptophan is at low concentration and the genes are synthesized. Okay, that's a, lot of, that's a lot to take in, so let's see if you understand what we just talked about. If you deleted sequence number two from the leader sequence in the trip operon, what would happen? The correct answer is C. Without sequence two competing for sequence three, the three, four termination loop would always form and transcription termination would always occur. There is a third level of regulation in tryptophan biosynthesis. Tryptophan is the effector molecule for the allosteric enzyme anthranilate synthase, the first step in the pathway. When the end product of the pathway, tryptophan, attaches to anthranilate synthase, the N enzyme is inactive. If tryptophan levels drop, tryptophan will release from anthranilate synthase, the enzyme becomes active again, and tryptophan synthesis resumes. Tryptophan biosynthesis 
is so heavily regulated because you only want to make as much tryptophan as you need and no more. The Operon is an excellent example of how regulation is tuned to just the right level. The allosteric site of anthranilate synthase is altered such that the enzyme always behaves as if tryptophan is bound. This would, C is the correct answer, cause a decrease in tryptophan synthesis. D is incorrect because the enzyme is not destroyed, it is only shut off. Summarize tryptophan. Here's an example of a useful activity you can do to improve your studying. Take a moment and summarize the three levels of regulation in the tryptophan operon. When you are actually watching these videos, it's a good idea to stop them and summarize concepts as you go through. The last section finished up talking about the trip operon. Tryptophan is one of the three aromatic amino acids. Let's look at the bigger picture and consider the regulation of phenylalanine, tyrosine, and tryptophan, which are all synthesized from chorismate. Chorismate is only used in the synthesis of these amino acids. Moreover, charismate is itself at the end of a seven-step biosynthetic pathway that starts with the common metabolites, phosphoenopriovate, and erythrospore phosphate. So here's the problem. The cell needs to make enough charismate to satisfy the needs of these three amino acid pathways, but it also wants to shut down the pathway of charismate synthesis if all these amino acids are in abundance. Now the cell does have feedback regulation by each amino acid, of the first step of its own pathway, that is, the step that utilizes charismate. But that does not lead to regulation of the steps between the common metabolites and charismate. In E. coli, there are three different DHAP synthesis enzymes. That is the first step in the charismate pathway, 2-dehydro-3-deoxyphosphophenolate aldolase. These DHAP synthase enzymes run the same reaction. But when each is inhibited by a different end product, either phenylalanine, tyrosine, or tryptophan, in this way, if two of the end products are at sufficient levels, but the other is not, there is still an appropriate flux of metabolites to charismate, which is then used to synthesize the required amino acid. What we are talking about here is regulation beyond the local pathway. In other words, global regulation. And that is the topic of the next lecture.